Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered how to capture the essence of a person in a digital portrait? Today, I'm going to guide you through creating a stunning portrait in Krita. Whether you're a complete beginner or looking to sharpen your skills, I'll share tips and tricks that will elevate your artwork. By the end of this video, you'll not only have a beautiful portrait, but also the confidence to explore your own unique style in the digital realm. Let's get started. Before diving into your sketch, take a moment to observe the photo. Look at the proportions, angles, and the relationship between different features. We'll begin with the sketch using a basic hard pencil that creates light, subtle lines. This allows us to focus on capturing the shapes and proportions from our reference photo without leaving heavy marks. Drawing is a highly personal process that varies for each individual, depending on your level of experience. I'll be sharing my approach, drawing on my trained eye for detail and accuracy. Once the basic outline is in place, start refining the features. Pay attention to the unique characteristics of the face, such as the shape of the jaw, the size of the eyes, and the curve of the lips. This stage is crucial for capturing likeness. Once you're confident in your sketch, Switch to a softer pencil that creates more noticeable lines to refine and define the shapes. Keep in mind that we'll use this sketch layer on top of our painting layer, so it needs to be clearly visible. I almost forgot to mention that having another view window for your canvas and a smaller version of your reference photo is incredibly helpful. You can see them on the left. Now it's time to begin painting. Create a new layer beneath your sketch layer and select a simple wet paintbrush. Focus on capturing the overall colors and remember to fill the entire canvas with paint first. Don't stress about getting the colors perfect. We'll be making plenty of adjustments along the way. Remember to frequently check the small window of your painting on the left as well. When painting a portrait from a reference photo, the colors observed play a vital role in achieving a lifelike representation. The main colors consist of the various skin tones, ranging from warm peaches and soft pinks to cooler shades like olive and tan. Accurately capturing these hues helps convey the subject's unique character. With a warm background, using warm colors like reds, oranges, or yellows can create a cohesive atmosphere that enhances the overall vibrancy of the portrait. This warmth can evoke intimacy and energy, drawing the viewer's eye to the subject. Use the Blender Blur Brush to blend the colors together and continue painting with more precise hues. Since we're still in the early stages, focus on color rather than details for now. I will paint my portrait from start to finish in a single layer. This approach is key to my artistic style, allowing me to maintain spontaneity capture the subject's essence directly, much like drawing in the real world. Focusing on one layer creates a unified piece where each brush stroke is intentional. This method keeps me engaged as I must make quick decisions and respond to the evolving image. It also encourages me to embrace imperfections, allowing for a lively dialogue between the paint and the canvas. For me, this technique reflects my vision and the immediacy of life itself. Now it's time to utilize the zoom feature and paint up close. I switched to a smaller brush to capture finer details. The eyes are the most crucial part of any portrait and demand special attention. Observe carefully the exact color of the sclera. As you can see, I've switched to a wet textured soft brush instead of the standard wet brush. For hard edges like contours and outlines, I use the RGBA brush. These two brushes are invaluable for creating textures and preventing a soft overall appearance. I begin refining the nose and lips, primarily using the RGBA brush to get the right shape. I also start being more careful with the Blender Blur brush. The face features various color zones, showcasing different shades of pink that blend light and shadow to create depth. For example, the cheeks may have warmer, rosy pinks, while the forehead and chin might display cooler, lighter tones. Shadows under the eyes and around the nose introduce deeper pinks or hints of purple. This interplay between light and shadow enhances realism and conveys the subject's character and emotion. By carefully applying these shades, 
An artist can capture the unique nuances of the face, bringing it to life with vibrancy and expression. I'm now painting the hair, which requires a different texture and approach. You don't need to paint every individual hair. The goal is to make it appear that way. I'm combining a large RGBA brush with a wet textured soft brush and blending them together. However, the real magic happens with the RGBA brush on top. Notice the vibrant orange light coming from behind, beautifully illuminating the face and hair. It creates a magical effect. I enjoy drawing ears. They often appear out of focus and can be captured with just a few brush strokes. Watch how I approach this, as I won't be making any adjustments until the end. I'm moving down her neck, adding greenish-gray tones to create depth and make her chin stand out. Speaking of the chin, notice the various planes that define its shape. Pay close attention to the dimples and curves around the mouth. It's easy to age the model if you overdo it. Begin to hide the sketch layer more frequently and see what actually happens with our painting. The area around the mouth, chin, and nose is crucial and distinctive for the model. I'll dedicate more time to this section until I'm satisfied with the result. Don't be afraid to alter or even mess up parts of your painting. Embracing mistakes can lead to genuine discoveries in your artwork. Sometimes these errors reveal truths about the piece that may not have been clear initially, or they may indicate that your initial sketch wasn't quite accurate. Right now, your best friend is the reference image. Use it as a guide to refine your work and capture the nuances you want. Trust the process. Every adjustment brings you closer to a more authentic representation. Remember, the most compelling elements often emerge from moments of uncertainty. I'd like to take a moment to emphasize how important it is for you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Creating content takes a lot of time, and every share, comment, and like helps promote it. Your support fuels my drive and motivation for future projects. Thank you in advance. I truly appreciate it. The eyes. Let's bring the model to life. Instead of relying on the blur brush, Switch to the wet bristles brush to create texture and distinctive marks as you blend the colors. We'll be spending a significant amount of time on the eyes as they play a vital role in achieving a true likeness in the portrait. Focus on defining sharp edges, strong reflections, and highlights to capture their depth. The moisture in the eyes is essential and we need to find effective ways to replicate that glimmer. Pay attention to the intricate details that can elevate the portrait and convey emotion. With careful observation and technique, we can create eyes that truly resonate with viewers. When it comes to the eyebrows, use a similar technique as you did for the hair. Aim for a detailed appearance while actually working with a larger brush. This method will give the eyebrows a painterly look that feels rich and textured. Once you've established the base, you can enhance them by adding a few individual hairs for realism and definition. Pay close attention to the color just below the eyes. It closely resembles the shade I used around her neck leaning more towards a greenish and cooler tone. This subtlety will help tie the features together harmoniously. And of course, I will be adding eyelashes as well. When you do this, be mindful not to overdo it. Striking a balance will ensure that the eyelashes enhance the overall look without overwhelming the other elements. Remember, each detail contributes to the portrait's depth and character. So take your time to get it right. As you work on the portrait, it's common for your eyes to get fatigued, making it challenging to spot differences and mistakes. A tried and true trick that many artists find incredibly helpful is to flip the image horizontally, 
You can easily do this by pressing M on your keyboard. Isn't that a game changer? By viewing the portrait from a different perspective, you can quickly identify areas that need adjustment or correction. This technique allows you to see your work more objectively, revealing inconsistencies that might have gone unnoticed. Now that you have a fresh view of the portrait, let's take the opportunity to fix any discrepancies. Taking a moment to reassess can make a significant difference in the final result. We're nearly there, aren't we? The resemblance is already starting to emerge, and from this point on, we can focus on refining and enhancing it further. It's important to evaluate the areas that might need adjustments. This could mean removing any excess detail or adding texture where things appear too smooth. For instance, the chin definitely requires more attention. It needs to be defined better to add depth and character. And let's not forget about those dimples. They bring so much personality to the portrait. Capturing their subtlety will really elevate the overall likeness. As you continue working, make it a habit to flip the image horizontally frequently. This simple trick allows you to see your work from a fresh perspective. Also, keep an eye on the smaller image on the left. It can provide valuable insights into proportions and overall composition. Utilizing these techniques will help you refine the portrait and bring out the character in a truly compelling way. Let's revisit the neck. We need to darken the shadow beneath the chin to enhance the depth and add more detail. Additionally, the collarbone requires further development. Let's define those edges more sharply and introduce more texture to give it a realistic appearance. Now it's time to focus on the clothing. I left this part for last because the clothes mainly frame the portrait and add to the overall look, rather than being the main focus. While we don't need to add a lot of detail, it's important that the clothes still feel connected to the rest of the painting. To do this, we can use darker strokes to separate the clothing from the body, which helps create depth and shows the shadows they cast. Working with a denim jacket can be a bit tricky because of its texture. I'll need to pay attention to the folds and highlights to capture that look. Let's see how we can make the jacket fit nicely into the overall composition while keeping it simple. This is definitely not an easy task to tackle. On the right side, there's a noticeable orange tint from the light source, which adds an interesting dimension, but also complicates things. The interplay of light and shadow creates very strong contrasts, making it challenging to balance the colors and maintain the overall harmony of the piece. These bold shadows can be tricky, as they can easily overwhelm the other elements if not handled carefully. It's important to study how the light interacts with the surfaces and how it defines the shapes. Let's take our time with this, focusing on capturing the nuances in the lighting to create a more dynamic and cohesive result. As you can see, I got it right on the second try. I painted almost everything and the result looks much better now. I'm now in the final stages of completing the portrait and it's an exciting time. Let's take a moment to revisit the hair and add some extra details that will bring it to life. Pay attention to the texture and highlights, adding strands and movement to create a more dynamic appearance. This portrait took me about five and a half hours to complete, which is relatively quick for a piece like this. Of course, I could have spent much more time on it, adding even more detail and potentially doubling or tripling the hours. However, that wasn't the goal for this project. I truly hope that my approach has been helpful to many people, as I believe tutorials like this are often lacking on the platform. This is my first time creating a video like this, and I really aim to do my best. Thank you for your understanding and support. Wishing you all the best, and until next time, goodbye.